It's Monday morning in Paphos, and Paul wakes up to an expensive phone call from Andrew Oliver. I spoke to Andrew this morning. I'm going to pay him um, 500 for the microphone. What? Yeah. His microphone costs 500. During the boys' first performance, Paul managed to break Andrew's microphone. But after a stressful opening weekend, that's not the only problem in the pack. Andrea? Andrea! You must come and have a word with me. Why can't you talk to me? How old are you, Andrea? Andrea! What's wrong, Karen? Talk to me. He's, up, he's, really, he's upset about the you not sort of lifting a finger, helping, etc. While the rest of the company were busy setting up for the second performance, Paul was nowhere to be found. With no roadies, the extra workload has to be carried by the rest of the group. And it's beginning to take its toll. Very cool. I don't know. After meeting with Andrea, Paul has refused to help with the manual labour and maintains that his energies are best employed elsewhere. To prove his point, he's organised a tap workshop at a local theatre school in an effort to publicise the show. I'm going and doing this thing today I've at the workshop, to right? Why? To try and get a more of an audience in. Bums on seats. I worked on the script. That's what I said I was going to yeah. do. Yeah. Andrew Oliver put yeah. in the thing, the producer, and I went, look, in my email, I will work on the creative aspect of the show. Mm. And I've done that. Mm. I might not be here for Fine. a few days, so you're just going to stay like this, yeah? <laughs> fucking hell, mate. You're a fucking child. I leave it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I get all the back, back end of this. That's how a producer is. It's very professional. With five days until the next performance, both men are keen to get some distance. While Andrea and Karen venture out to check on ticket sales, Paul sets off east across the island to Cyprus's second city, Limassol. That's a fucking gratitude. Did you close the door? I see them snapping. Trailer to save the rent. Rooms to let it be sent. No phone, no pool, no pen. I ain't got no cigarettes of a... Last night he's going on about, oh, no one's bigger than the show. Andrea Morelli's name is above the fucking title. I thought the ship was going to be a lot tighter than this, you know? Just turn up, do your gig, everything's all good, but no. I'm going to pull over to the side and wait for the convoy to catch up. Paul has offered discounted tickets to the show and a free tap class to the students of Limassol Theatre School and is expecting a good turnout. I think it's about 200 odd in the, in the school, and I'm imagining probably looking around 180 or something like that, but if there's 180 fucking kids wearing tap shoes, do you know what I mean? It gets loud, you want to save your voice, so I go, like, stop, that's okay from the top again, shit like that, do you know what I mean? Okay, let's try, uh, we'll try something that I call uh, Q&A. When I was a kid, the whole breakdancing, body popping thing was happening, and I just uh, captured my imagination, you know? Ah. Doing the moonwalk in the playground, do the robotics and all that sort of stuff, so that's how it started, really. From the age of 11, Paul began entering dance competitions with a routine inspired by another of his heroes. I was just in the kitchen one day, and I switched on the TV, and it was Beat It. And he comes out of this room, and then he just does this move, and then carries on walking, and it just hit me. I just, it was just that moment, and I was like, who is that? <laughs> Gave me a bit of credibility as a kid, you know? You had some sort of popularity, which for me was quite cool, because I was the only Asian kid at school. I got this massive boost of adrenaline, and, 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 and it just was like, wow, this is, this is potent, you know? Yeah, how was it? Not very good. I expected a lot more. Great. I mean, it's last minute, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? What are you going to expect, like, 180 people to, you know, <laughs> change their plans? In a change of plans of his own, Paul decides, against returning to Paphos, 
and sets off further east yeah, okay. on a journey to the far side of the island. I'll come over now then. I'm on my way. There's, I got a little bit of business I need to take care of. Do you want to know where we're going? Uh, yeah, sure. Should I tell you? What's that? You're a bit nosy, ain't you, mate? Very nosy. What's wrong with just finding out, man? Are you like, you like a control freak or something? Paul's publicist has arranged for him to make a personal appearance at a local nightclub, taking him to the bright lights of Cyprus's infamous party capital, Ayanapa. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're high. But when his appearance yet again fails to pack in the punters, Paul insists on a late night interview with the series director. I'm having to go and play the hardest character on that stage, that's for sure. And physically, I've got him down to a T, I reckon. Everywhere you go, there's Frank Sinatra's and Dean Martin's. No one does, Sammy. You get fucking laughed at just to even try to do him. At least I had the courage to have a go. At least I have the courage to have a go. Why does that matter? You get to where you get because of who you are. Age has got nothing to do with it. <sighs> oh, God. I mean, of soap. And I'm in a tribute show. I'm in a tribute fucking show. In the next episode, Paul travels to Nicosia. The rest of the company keep up with their regular gigs, and there's a worrying development on far away close. It could mean that this doesn't happen, all this that, that's happening. 